There are 610 million users on LinkedIn and 45% of those visit the site daily. Today, we're gonna to talk about seven LinkedIn tips to help you boost engagement. What's going on? We're live. I'm Christian. Hello, I'm Aaron. So this is a little bit different. I'll intro this a little bit uh, for like 10 seconds. So if this is your first time watching, this is not normal for Tip for Tip. Usually we have you, the business owner, ask marketing questions and we come to your location, we shoot that and it's all pre-recorded. However, this is live. So if you have questions, make sure that you leave a comment. Make sure you stop right now and you're like, hey, I'm, I have some questions about LinkedIn. We're gonna cover seven things or seven tips to improve engagement. But if you have something you've been wondering, how the heck do I do that on LinkedIn? Drop those in the comments and our trusty sidekick over here will kick them over to us. Um, hey, Jack, thank you, Jack. That's Jack <laughs> over there, you can't see him, but Jesse he is here. Behind the camera. Awesome. All right, so I wanna start with number seven or number one? Uh, number one. Number one, okay. Yeah, for sure. What's number one? That's yours. All right, fine, I'll do number one. We labeled it, but I just wanted to test him because I think I'm 7'2", right? Yep. All right, so number one, create your personal profile. And obviously you need to create your, pers your personal profile, but a lot of people mess this part up. Um, they A, don't have a good headshot, that's crucial, but then they need to fill out their profile to exactly what they're looking for or what they're going to help people do. So you have a little bio and inside of that bio, you can do something like Christian could say, I create beautiful websites, or I work at Bit Branding and I make things look pretty or whatever. So that complements what people are already gonna see. They, have, they see a great headshot, they see the description, and then they're more intrigued for that. So that's really step one. Even if you just do those two things, it's gonna be very important for you. But a lot of people, they don't have a good headshot or they like took their picture with their phone on the front camera and just put it on there um, just do those two things the reason you want a personal profile on LinkedIn right now is just that they're giving a lot of push to that there's a lot of pages that are going on there's a lot of pages that are businesses like we have bit for any you should go follow us but they also are giving a lot more I guess reach to personal profiles and if your profile is filled out correctly you're going to reach and attract the right people and eventually get more engagement because people are like hey i trust this guy I know what he's his content's going to be about and then it'll kind of lead into a couple more tips that we have here but uh, yes i mean i think what you're trying to say is that whenever you're posting on linkedin try not to do it from your company profile as much try to go more into your personal profile because we are seeing better engagement with other people liking and commenting and sharing content from personal profiles versus company pages, uh, which LinkedIn does have those, those uh, company pages, which technically it is harder to post, especially on, on mobile. Uh, they've made some changes now where you can actually access your company page, but for sure, try to use your personal profile as often as you can and promote your personal brand in conjunction with your company. Uh, but. Uh, what we're trying to say is like personal profiles get better engagement than company profiles. And it, and it may change, who knows. Um, but one good thing, I guess another thing about LinkedIn is different than every other social platform is you actually get the data from your personal profile. So if Christian posts a video of himself, he can actually see not only how many views, but how many people have been reached. Whereas like on Facebook or Instagram, unless you have a business profile, you just know that you got so many likes on it. You don't have the data behind it. So it, it really benefits you to to use your personal profile because of the reach, but also you still get that data that you would want. All right, so number two, technically Aaron already spoiled it for me, but number two is to get a professional headshot. Uh, again, like Aaron said, we've seen a lot of profiles out there, especially people who are applying <laughs> to our jobs that we post on LinkedIn with absolutely no picture at all. It just has the little username grayed out. Uh, it's just terrible. Don't do that. Make sure that you get a professional headshot. Even the newer iPhones, you can get a picture with one of your iPhones, one of those newer iPhones with that uh, portrait effect right. where it blurs out the background and that's probably the best thing you can do right now. And make sure that also your headshot matches your either what you're looking for right now currently or the type of people that you're trying to attract. Uh, for example, 
me as a creative professional, I don't find it necessary to wear a tux with a tie and all that. Uh, but maybe a nice, you know, button up shirt uh, will be a good, something good to, to dress uh, for. Yeah. So make sure that you look good. Make sure that you have something appropriate uh, as far as clothing. And the other thing I would say is the background. Make sure that you have good contrast. And it's not like uh, dark on dark. Uh, make sure that you have a nice, clean background uh, from uh, for, for your uh, professional headshot. <laughs> so number three here is exactly what I did not do. I read, I accidentally read number two, is to proofread network, which it is, and that's the kind of people who are on there, like those C-level executives. They are the people who are in corporations. They own the businesses. They are. It is a B2B place. However, we've seen people that said, screw that, and are definitely doing a lot of zigging when people are zagging, like the marketing entrepreneurs in our space anyway, like people like Gary Vaynerchuk or Grant Cardone or Tony Robbins, anybody like that, they're saying, sure, this is professional, but we're gonna do memed videos, we're gonna do this, we're going to completely go off the rails. And in that sense, I don't think it's professional and like what Christian and I are talking about is like making sure to have a clean headshot and to do this stuff. But um, the verbiage still needs to be professional. You can't just go out there and say like, Hey, that would look good, G-U-D, or like have misspellings or use the incorrect names. So you still need to have that. Um, but on a marketing side, outside of this, I just want to clarify, I think there are a lot of people who are disrupting the arena with doing things that are not necessarily as professional uh, with like writing articles or just doing disruptive videos. But that doesn't mean you should use incorrect language or bad grammar. Yeah, and if, you, if you're using LinkedIn on desktop, you can install a plugin on a on a Chrome browsers. It's called Grammarly. And oh yeah. I think you'd be able to. You could probably do it from uh, Firefox, maybe Safari. I'm not sure, but it allows you to as you're typing things. It allows you to see uh, if you have any misspellings or maybe you need to add a comma or things like that. So it helps you with the basics of grammar, and it's completely free. They do have some paid options but it definitely helps you out when you're typing stuff and proofreading everything that you're typing. I need to install that. Do you have yours in the oven? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of tricky on, on certain apps. So sometimes on, like I use Webflow, so I'm developing websites and it's kind of hard to keep that on while I'm developing websites because it just kind of interferes with the, the software that I use for that. Ah. Uh, but yeah, on Google Drive and all those things, you definitely want to have that turned on, especially on social media. Okay, so like Google Doc. Okay, yeah, I've t we've mentioned it to people, but I I need to download Grammarly. All right, all right. Uh, no, no, no. Mm. Number four is to change your default button from the normal it was, it was connect, change it to follow. You can do this. Actually, I was doing this earlier today, and I think the only way I found the way how to do it is uh, going on the actual app. So if you go to your profile on the left hand side, you click on view profile, then you click on the little gear icon, mm -hmm. and then you click on privacy, and then you want to go to who can follow you. And in there, there's a little toggle that says make follow primary. If enabled, follow will be the primary action when members view your profile. So if they're not connected to you in any sort of way, they will see that follow button, which they can do. And you'll more than likely get more people that way to actually follow your content and it will help you boost your engagement. Um, after they follow you, then you have the option to make a connection and make that, you know, that second, it's like a second, adding a second step, right. uh, if you will. Uh, but again, you, most likely you're gonna get people to hit that follow button than connect. So consider changing that. Uh, I just did it today, and uh, if you don't know how to do it, or if you want me to walk you through, I can make that little video, or just put the text down below in the comment. Um, I couldn't find a way how to do it on desktop, but I do know how to do it on the LinkedIn app. Which, yeah, a lot of people are switching to that. Jack, you should make that as a, we're doing testimonials here, so just kind of a live interaction, third wall, break the third wall here. Um, or is it fourth wall? Fourth wall. Fourth wall. Um, fifth, maybe. Maybe fifth wall. It could be sixth wall. We don't know. So for all the actors, make sure to write that down for Christian to do a tutorial on that because that's a, I mean, we need to do tutorials anyway so he can do that one. Um, 
And another thing that's cool about the follow feature is, as Christian said, um, I think of it as like dating. It's kind of like, you know, you just meet Christian and you go on a date versus saying, hey, we should be, uh, we should date. And the follow allows you to reach more people, sure, but it also allows you to connect with more people who would have never actually probably said, hey, I want to connect with you anyway. And it kind of deepens the amount of followers you have, which I think it's like you top out at like five or 6,000, something like that. But follows, you can have tens or hundreds of thousands. So mm-hmm. you never run out of those, you run out of connections. So Typically, famous people or celebrities or influ- big influencers do switch it to the follow just because it's easier to to keep track of um, Mm -hmm. and just easier for people to yeah just follow your content uh, that way instead of having to go through the whole connect process yes all right number five is recommendations and actually i need to write a few because um i asked people for recommendations uh what was it or i asked to do recommendations for people last week and i was like oh i'll do like three or four and then like 15 people commented and i just got another one where another person commented so i have a lot of recommendations to do because um i'm gonna be nice and do more than i needed to but what recommendations are are, again think about all your other social media you get reviews and it's just associated to the business well what this does for you is LinkedIn. It's very intelligent. It's basically your credibility, your street cred, um, your rep, as Will Smith would say on Fresh Prince. This is what people think about you online. And if I recommend Christian, yeah, he's the best website designer that I know around. That recommendation through LinkedIn, A, I think it has a little bit more value because it's a professional network and somebody else is putting their name on there. But B, if it's somewhere on Facebook or somewhere else, all they can do is leave a star rating and that's okay. But like with recommendations on LinkedIn, you have to write and you have to put something on there. So at the, at the very least, somebody's gonna put, hey, this person did a great job. Like you're get, at least getting some verbiage or some context to, to the word. Um, so you're gonna get more engagement. Now, I, I don't know if LinkedIn necessarily boosts you because of that, but you will get more engagement on your page because of the recommendations on there and you have recommendations and you see, hey, Christian has 13 recommendations and this other guy has four. I'm probably gonna go over here. I'm gonna check out his page and what he puts out versus somebody else because so many other people recommended him. Yeah, and I think uh, we kind of wrote here to have at least from five to 10 recommendations, it's excellent. Uh, compared to some people that have zero, like this guy. How many do I have? Four? Uh, Three? But I mean, it is it is hard because it is a very custom message that you have to type out for that person. Um, and I have I've had done I think one. Um, and I mean, yeah, it is a. Can you recommend me? Time consuming. Yeah, I can you if you recommend me. Okay. Okay. Sounds so you're gonna get right. first recommendation. <laughs> I'm gonna be. That will be good. Hey Jack, can you recommend me too? <laughs> yes. Jack says yes. He raised his thumb. All right. So number six is to seek the right connections. Uh, I think LinkedIn, when you first start out, it asks you to connect your other social networks, as well as if you have any sort of email list um, or even the contacts on your phone. Uh, you can do all these three things, and it might get you started with people that you already know. But a better way to do that or to get more of those right connections is to target influential people thought leaders or other key professionals in your industry. And that's just as easy as finding those people, finding people that you admire and literally trying to connect with them. But don't just click connect or follow, actually type in a message for them and uh, something custom for them. Uh, Maybe you know that that person likes the Jayhawks and you're also a fan of the Jayhawks. Which you should be. I would definitely do that. I would type in the message, something along the lines of, hey, I love the Jayhawks, Uh, something, something, something. I would love to connect. Give them a reason why you should allow them to connect and vice versa. Um, It could be, uh, you know, it could be a hobby. It could be something that you have in common. It could be something completely that you don't have in common, but you still want to bring it up to make that personal note in there. Yeah, it's a, well, that's a, a very good point. If I said, like, hey, I love uh, Puerto Rico, immediately your guard's down. Even if I'm trying to sell you something, like, oh, well, you said Puerto Rico. Like, I love Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Exactly. Um, it's like, oh, yeah, I love this kind of food. And you're like, well, we should go get that sometime. Um, so yeah, the guard's down. That's good. But also two things from, from that is connection-wise, a lot of people don't know, you can open up the app. Um, I don't know if you've seen this or known this before, but you can go to like a networking group or like in a, in a space 
and there's actually a feature where you can have the nearby feature and you mm -hmm. can connect with people that way too so it, that's usually connecting with the right people if you say like hey we're close to each other don't have to go to my profile or anything go to linkedin and you can connect as long as they're on linkedin they'll connect you that way um yeah i went to a well we went to social media marketing world in san diego and i went to a linkedin talk mm. and the person at, towards the end they said oh go to your settings turn this on and everybody at each other and i probably added 100 200 people just from sitting in that little talk wow uh, so yeah and it was people who were related to my industry so that was really good uh, so I wouldn't do it just at any random. Right, turn it on there. now, look uh, at us. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you could be strategic about how you do that. Maybe you're doing a class or something and you want to connect with those people uh, easier, you know? Uh, you can just ask them to turn that on and connect with everyone and encourage everyone to connect with the other people too. Uh, All right, and the, well, one last thing I want to say about this. Oh, if you're gonna message people, it's good to do what Christian said, have a common thread. The but the bad thing to do, I've actually shouted these people out on LinkedIn, I don't care. Um, if you connect with me, and, and this is for anybody, I get mad about it and I actually do something about it. A lot of other people just ignore, but it's like, I'm gonna connect with you, Christian, and then I'm gonna send you this super long message about how um, I'm gonna build your website or whatever else, and it's like, A, you took no time to realize that we own a marketing agency, but B, mm -hmm. you're trying to sell me as soon as you connect with me, and that ruins the platform, so if you're doing that, please stop. Yeah. And if you know people who are like, please message them. I'm very nice about it. Like, hey, the, this is not a way to grow your business, but yeah. connect with the right people and do it the right way is so much more important. So out of all these tips to get more engagement, I think that's probably the most beneficial for you. Um, all right, so our last one here is to post original content. There's a lot of people who do curated content because it's so much easier. Just mm -hmm. share what other people are doing. Just share what New York Times is doing. Just share what Forbes is doing. Just share whatever. And I say those because it's a business platform. But really, you should create your own content and upload that content to LinkedIn because A, you're gonna get, a, if you upload a video, it's gonna be a lot more reach. It shows you as like a subject matter expert and LinkedIn likes that too. They like when you upload your original content, they're gonna, you're gonna reach a lot more people. And that's the biggest benefit is you're gonna have a lot more people who are spread out across your platform because of that. Especially video. Yes. Video is one of the things that LinkedIn is pushing right now. And if you're creating unique original content for LinkedIn in video format and posting it originally on LinkedIn on the platform, you're gonna get great, great engagement on that piece. So consider doing video, maybe a video series, maybe just even a handheld phone type talk mm -hmm. uh, and posting those. Those are doing really, really good on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn Live will be coming to you guys soon as well. LinkedIn Live is out for a lot of people who have at least like three to 5,000 followers, but eventually it'll be available for all of us. Mm -hmm. And right now I have like two friends who have LinkedIn Live and I get notification every time. So I think it's gonna be like the start of Facebook Live where it's gonna be really beneficial. So definitely do that too. Yeah, so there you have it. Seven tips to help you boost engagement, but we have an extra one actually. Um, I'm looking at this right now. Bonus. What? Hashtags what? are supported. Su supported. Uh, supported. Support, supported. So make sure to use them. Purpose. Um, and also, if you go to, I believe it's your company page, you're able to follow certain hashtags. So for example, we could be following hashtag bit branding, or we use the hashtag stay social quite often. Mm -hmm. So maybe it'd be a good idea for us to follow that hashtag. And when you, as a company, if you follow those hashtags, uh, LinkedIn gives you a feed, sort of like how Instagram does it. So in, on Instagram, you can actually follow hashtags and Instagram will give you a feed of those hashtags and people who are posting pictures and tagging that hashtag. Same for LinkedIn. Consider using those unique hashtags that differentiate your company or your brand and use them within your post. So it's easier to find your content. Nice, use it. All right, and if you are watching this afterwards, we realize that it's 6.20 at night, so you may be eating dinner or something, and you have a question about LinkedIn or have good feedback or, hey, this was really helped you, please leave a comment below. Let us know. We'll respond to that. If there's follow-up for it, we'll, again, comment uh, with that as well. Um, anything else we're missing? I think that's it. Uh, we have a comment from Matthew Puckett. He's saying, what about videos of puppies? Will that get engagement? I don't think it, will, it, it might people are puppies still, in business suits for sure yeah yeah i mean if it's something related to business maybe uh but yeah i don't think linkedin would be the somebody else put on there would they say that. uh you're a preacher 
What did he say? Preach, bro. Preach, bro. It might have been when you were talking about um, people being selsy. Oh, gotcha. They, they try to connect with you. Nice. Um, but yeah, Matthew, um, if you have puppies and you're on LinkedIn and you dress them up in business suits and you can have a real business story, you know, probably yeah. get a little we, bit of engagement. I mean, we used a puppy in one of our videos a long time ago. Uh, oh, yeah, Super Bowl out, commercial. Shout out to Harley. Shout out Harley. <laughs> Um, but that was on Facebook. We should yeah, have put it on LinkedIn. It's a Super Bowl commercial. All right. So, again, make sure you leave a comment. Really let us know you guys are in here. If you're just watching, you're lurking, you're kind of like, I'm not going to mm. do anything. Yeah, uh, we we can't see who you are. So, make sure you leave a comment. We, wanna, we want to... Say hi to you. Yes. Say hi. Wave. We'll do the wave emoji. Um, but really, just answer any questions. Yep. Um, all right. I think that's it. We'll be back next week, next Wednesday, with a regularly scheduled episode of Tip for Tip. I don't remember who it is. Jack, who is it? Uh, who is it? Come I, on. I just looked at it today, actually. Let's just give these people what they want. What's the episode? The episode is uh, Janitorial Service. That was Janitorial Service? No. Is that the one? No. No. We don't know. No. So, it's a janitorial company. What is it, Jack? It's going to tell you guys. It is. Just so you guys know what you're going to get into next week. D. Bennett Commercial Services, LLC. D. Bennett Commercial Services, LLC will be on here asking us a marketing question in, a, in exchange for a tip back in his industry, the janitorial service industry, and what else would he do? That's it. But <laughs> if you'd like to be on this show, like a regular scheduled show, make sure to go to bitbranding.co forward slash tip for tip and fill out that form so that we can get you on our regular scheduled show, not the live stream. But thanks for tuning in. Word. Bye now. Bye now or later now.